Good evening. Welcome to Emmanuel Presbyterian Church. My name is Darren, one of the pastors here, and it's good to be in the house of the Lord together and, and celebrate. Uh, this evening is a, a unique evening. It's our Christmas Eve service. Uh, it's a service of lessons and carols, uh, and so with that, uh, we will walk through the story of redemption together. Uh, and what we'll find is sort of in an antiphonal way, there'll be a reading from the scriptures and there'll be a carol or a song, sometimes that we'll stand and sing together, uh, or sometimes it's in the form of special music. But both are intended, right, both are intended for us to think. If I had one word for us this evening, it would simply be this, remember. Our desire is to remember. Remember. To remember from the scriptures God's story of redemption. And we'll do that as we walk through God's word and as we walk through God's word that is sung together. And so that's really the purpose of this evening is to remember not only the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but why he came uh, and the purpose of his coming, which ultimately is to provide redemption for his people. If you're visiting with us this evening, we are Honored by your presence. Thank you so much for being with us. There is a, a visitor's card. If you wanted to fill that out, uh, I'd be glad to greet you after the service and take that card from you. But we're just honored to have you with us tonight. Uh, this evening's service ends uh, with uh, sort of a candle lighting. And so with that, I hope that you got a candle on the way in. If not, we'll distribute those towards the end of our service together uh, as we will conclude with, uh, with candle lighting and darkening uh, of our sanctuary as we sing together. Uh, we do want to encourage parents to help kids as they light candles and uh, uh, keep as much wax off the floor as possible. Uh, but it is good to be together as family. And so with that, what I want to do is I want to pray for us, and then we're going to stand together for our call to worship this evening. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for bringing us here this evening. Thank you for an opportunity to remember. Father, to remember in a busy time of year really what Christmas is about. And so, Father, I pray now that you would grant us as your people pause. Would you grant us as your people an opportunity to to be reminded through your word that both with how we think and in our hearts, we would understand who Jesus is and why he came to earth. And so, Father, we ask that he would be glorified, that he would be lifted up, and as he is, that many would be drawn to him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand with us for our call to worship. Our call to worship this evening comes from Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, and Psalm 95, 6. Uh, I'll read the light print. Please respond with the bold. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son, whom He appointed heir of all things, through whom He also created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of His nature. And He upholds the O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker.
first lesson is from Genesis, Genesis 1, 26 to 31. God creates man and woman in his own image. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed, that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Then there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. second lesson comes from the book of Genesis, chapters 3, 1 through 15, and 22, 15 through 18. Sin enters the world, and God promises a redeemer for the nations. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, 
And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore, and your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. lesson is from Isaiah chapter 11 verses 1, 2, 4, 6 through 9. A shoot from the stump of Jesse shall bear fruit. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat and the calf and the lion and the fatted calf together and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together 
and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The fourth lesson is from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2, 6, and 7. To us a child is born. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has a light shone. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
This is the fifth lesson from Matthew 1, 18 through 25. His name shall be Jesus. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as uh, he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife. For that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from, from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and they called his name Jesus. Sixth lesson from Luke 2, verses 1 through 7, the birth of Jesus. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. 
And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. The seventh lesson comes from the Gospel according to Luke, chapters 2, verses 8 through 21. Glory to God in the highest. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. And at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Oh, oh, oh. 
John 1, 1 through 5, and 14 through 18, and chapter 14, verses 6 through 7. The Word became flesh. I am the way. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he was before me. For from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you have known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and you have seen him. ninth lesson this evening comes from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, the visit of the wise men. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who is born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. 
When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all of Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them the time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. And after listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures, they offering him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the lessons. We thank you for the carols. And Father, we pray now that you would take your word and you would uh, illuminate it in such a way that not only would we see it, uh, but we would be able to understand it and apply it. For We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, my deepest hope uh, is that our service this evening, our service of lessons and carols, will serve to remind, encourage, and challenge each of us. Perhaps for the first time, or for countless times, you have heard through our lessons and carols, God's story of redemption. A story that finds its fullest fulfillment in and through God's beloved Son, Jesus Christ. God's story of redemption, the true Christmas story, reminds each of us that our greatest dignity and value are found in being made in the image of God. In God's plan and design for us as mankind, He created each of us to know Him, to enjoy Him, and as His image bearers, reveal His wonder, reveal His sovereignty, reveal His glory into all of His good creation. Adam and Eve, our first parents, flourished as they were at peace with God, each other, and the world. Sin enters the world, as sin enters the world, it enters the world and challenges God's motive and character. As Adam and Eve are tempted by Satan in the garden. Adam and Eve disobey God. They rebel against His rule and authority. They reject God and they seek to rule themselves. Satan does not give Adam and Eve what he promised, autonomy, but they become slaves to sin. And darkness covers the land. We are born into a world that's turned upside down. We are rebels. We are enemies of God. We're at war with each other. And we are laboring furiously in a world tarnished by sin. But as we've heard, even in this dark hour of humanity, God's promises of mercy and grace come through. There will be a son, there will be the offspring of Eve who will come and crush the head of the serpent and bring an end to the reign and rule of sin and death. Beginning in Genesis 3 and throughout the Old Testament, the need for and the means of redemption become increasingly clear. As mankind fill the earth, their sin against God and each other increases and becomes abundantly obvious. We live in a sinful and broken world. Mankind seeks to remake God in their own image, and they perform unspeakable acts of wickedness against each other. God intervenes by calling Abraham and a people to Himself and for Himself. He promises to bless them, and in return they are to love, obey, and follow Him, but they don't. They fail to follow, ultimately because sin is a heart problem. They need a new heart, 
A heart that is not compromised by sin. A heart in which the law of God is written. A heart that loves God above everyone and everything else. Through the prophets, God promises to redeem and save His people. He will save them by sending the promised Messiah who is the perfect prophet, priest, and king of God's people. God will save His people by giving Himself by sending His beloved Son into the world to save His people from their sins if they look to Him and His provision of redemption by faith. Jesus is not a fairy tale or a mere example to follow, but He is very God and very man. He is the one the prophets foretold would come. He is the one to whom God's plan of redemption and salvation from sin rests fully and completely. So as our last lesson highlights, to rightly see, to rightly understand, to rightly respond to the coming of Jesus and His offer of salvation, we must be wise. Like the wise men, we must be watchful, we must take initiative, be sacrificial, and exalt in Jesus. Yes, it's an acronym. Although lacking many personal details, the evangelist Matthew tells us that after the birth of Jesus, watchful wise men found uh, that came from the east to Jerusalem. More than likely they were from Babylon. They were Babylonians. They were part of the ruling class. As we see in the book of Daniel, they may have been wise men and magicians whose job it was to interpret the stars and dreams. They were learned men and who were well versed in Babylonian history and philosophy but had a working knowledge of the writings and view of the nations they had once conquered. They were Gentiles, familiar with Judaism but by no means deeply knowledgeable of the Holy Scriptures. These men knew enough to understand that at the appearance of a new star and following its path, it would lead to something extraordinary and profoundly significant. The appearance of the star and its leading them to Jerusalem was an indication of God's royal favor. As they had heard of the promised king of the Jews, the promised savior, more than likely from the stories of God's people, while they were in exile, they had come to witness and pay homage to him. These wise men were watchful, But notice their initiative. They traveled a great distance under difficult circumstances. And upon arriving in Jerusalem, they sought to learn more. They seek to gain understanding. So as foreign dignitaries, they seek to counsel with the king, with King Herod. Herod, as you see in our text, was insecure. And he viewed the iniquity of the wise men as a threat to his own reign and rule. And he sought the counsel of Jewish religious leaders around him. Under the pretense of interest, pretending false allegiance, Herod sent the wise men to Bethlehem to search for the promised Messiah. All along knowing he wanted to eliminate this threat to his throne. The wise men are watchful. They take initiative, but notice their sacrifice. They left their homeland, their families, to come seek after the king to whom the star pointed. At great personal expense, they traveled hundreds of miles to come see the king of the Jews. They bring costly gifts to show homage and reverence. These wise men were willing to sacrifice everything to see Jesus. Watchful, filled with initiative, overflowing with sacrifice, leads to worship. The wise men exult in Jesus. In verse 10, as the star they have followed comes to rest over the home where Jesus now resides, the wise men rejoice and are filled with great joy. The quest of their journey is now at hand. They fall down and worship Jesus. They prostrate themselves before a newborn king. They exalt in Him and find glory in Him. The wise men don't understand everything about Jesus, but they knew enough to rightly glory 
and worship in Him. They are the first to identify and respond to Jesus as the promised King of Israel. They're watchful. They take initiative. They're sacrificial. They exalt fully in Jesus. They even protect Jesus as they don't relay to Herod all that they had seen or heard. So the question to us is simply this. Are you wise? How are you responding to God's story of redemption this evening? How are you responding to the birth of Jesus? Our last lesson reveals to us that the wise men demonstrate for us a life-giving response of faith. May we be watchful. May we take initiative. May we inquire to learn more. And may we exalt in Jesus. May we find our hope, salvation, and joy in Christ Jesus. But we also need to repent. May we repent of responding to Jesus in the ways of Herod. Jesus was a threat to the reign and rule of Herod. Herod saw no need for a Savior. He pretended to have interest to gain an advantage and advance his kingdom by eradicating Jesus. Getting rid of the competition. We also respond to Jesus like Herod, don't we? In our sinful rebellion, Jesus is a threat to our rule and reign. We often show interest in His birth, but we're not interested in His person. We see a babe in a manger and forget that Jesus is King and ruler of all. We pursue Jesus to gain a perceived advantage, but we're unwilling to fall prostrate before Him. We know a few stories about Jesus, but we're unwilling to take initiative to learn more and gain understanding. In our self-righteousness, we don't see the need for a Savior. We either believe that we can save ourselves or that our sin is really not that bad after all. The only right response to King Jesus is repentance of sin and faith in His saving work. Repentance and faith are God's gift to us that lead to worship and lead to obedience. If we, are to, if we are to be wise, if we are to be watchful, we must take initiative, be willing to sacrifice and exalt in Jesus. If we're not doing this, like Herod, then we're simply plotting to eradicate Jesus from our lives because He's a threat to our failed and falling kingdoms. So I ask again, how are we responding to Jesus? Like Jerusalem and like Herod, are we troubled? Are you seeking to remove Jesus and keep Him out of your life? Or by faith, are you walking towards Him? Let me pray. Father, it is that question that we must engage. Father, are we walking towards Jesus or are we trying to move Him out of our lives? I pray that You would grant us the gift of repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, as we consider His birth, life, death, resurrection, and promise of eternal hope that are ours in this season. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we begin uh, our last two carols this evening, Silent Night, let me do two things. One, I just want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to Claudia and Amy, our vocalists and instrumentalists who have put forth a lot of work. And Daniel, yes, we may clap uh, as we say thank you. Uh, uh, They put in a lot of time to, to make this evening possible, so thank you. Uh, also, thank you to Sarah Jane this evening who uh, took on the illuminaries out uh, to, to guide us on our way in this evening. So, uh, and then many others, but just by way of saying thanks, offering gratitude to God for uh, the acts of service uh, of our people. Uh, I will light a candle uh, and we'll dim the sanctuary uh, in the back and uh, we'll begin to spread that light throughout it as we sing Silent Night. We'll sing Silent Night, then you'll receive the benediction, uh, and then we'll end with Hark the Herald's Angels Sing.
stand and sing Silent Night together. would be a good time to extinguish your candles and keep them vertical if you don't mind. As we exit, there is a basket they can be returned to. Uh, I want to be the first to wish you Merry Christmas and invite you back to worship tomorrow morning. Uh, we'll be here at 1030 tomorrow morning. Uh, I can think of no better reason to be in worship uh, than Christmas morning. So I want to encourage you to come back and join us tomorrow morning. Receive the benediction before our last hymn. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace.